Hello everyone, my name is Kishan and welcome to Gems of Thought series episode 5. This is a two-part episode in which we are going to talk about methods of root cause analysis in Kappa and in specific two methods, 5 Ys and Fishbone Diagram. Before we dive into the specific methods, it would be very important to look at the Kappa workflow so that we can understand how each Kappa may progress through various stages. So of course, there would be issue identification at first. This means the point in time when we find out about the issue for the first time and decide to open a Kappa. This would be generally followed by issue triage, categorization, and assignment. This means that breadth, scope, and the impact of the issues would be first determined and accordingly it would be categorized as a major, critical, or a minor kappa or any other similar levels that exist in your organization's quality management system and then it would be assigned to specific personnel. There would be one issue owner that, as the name suggests, owns the issue and is responsible for coordinating the investigation and keeping a track of all the actions. Apart from that, there would be also an approver or approvers specifically from the functional team as well as the quality assurance. And then perhaps not at this point but later on, there will be also individual action owners. So once basic assignment and triage is done, the time would come for the investigation and root cause analysis. This is the most crucial part of Kappa management according to me because if you don't do investigation and root cause analysis properly, you are not going to find out the actual causes of the deviation and hence your preventive or corrective actions would have little value. So having said that, let's look at the two most prevalent methods that we have at our disposal and review how best we can use them. So 5Y's method was originally developed by Sakichi Toyoda who was a self-made industrialist and inventor in Japan and whose son actually went on to found Toyota Motors. And this is how it trickled down to the Toyota's manufacturing process as the main problem solving tool. So the method is very simple. You first establish the problem statement that you encountered and then ask why the problem happened. When you derive the answer, you ask again why that must have happened and you reach to a more deeper and next immediate cause. And by continuing the process, when you pose the question five times, you are likely to arrive at the logical root cause. Let's consider an example. Say that we have a problem of 35 late submissions to the FDA for last 10 days and we are using five whys to get to the actual root cause. So as seen on the screen, we'll start asking why. Why were 35 cases submitted late to the FDA? Well, the answer of first why is cases were not completed in time. When you ask again why, you may realize that too many cases were assigned to each employee and that is why they could not get to all the cases within the deadline. When you again ask why, you may find there was not enough manpower and when you ask why was that, you will come to know that workload forecasting and backup resourcing were not done accurately and upon asking one more why, you will realize that there was no procedure or guidance for anticipating workload and requiring backup manpower. This final cause seems like the root cause as it points to a process issue and when you do the reverse check, the causality and the sequence both make sense. So starting from the absence of procedure and guidance for anticipating workload and requiring backup manpower which led to poor or no workload forecasting and backup resourcing which led to lack of manpower and this shortage of manpower led to the practice of assigning too many cases for each individual and that ultimately led to cases not being completed in time and cases being late. Makes sense, doesn't it? And now that we know what the actual root cause is, it will be easy to plan and execute corrections, corrective actions and preventive actions. Now, do you always have to ask why five times? Not necessarily. It is possible that for the simpler problems, you will arrive at the actual root cause in less than five whys or for more complex problems, you will have to ask why a couple of more times. But the idea is to keep asking why until you get a logical and legitimate root cause. Now, let's review some more tips on how to answer the question when you ask why each time. So needless to say, there should be no assumptions and conjectures and you should always provide the factual details. Also, we should not jump the guns but rather provide the answers step by step as in the nearest cause of the problem first, then cause of that second, then cause of that third, up until you arrive at the final root cause. 
Also, blaming human error is a strict no-no. So if you answer the question that John Smith did this wrong, you would not get anywhere in the root cause analysis. As we have already seen in one of the other videos, human errors are nothing but the symptoms of other actual root causes. And hence, use the actual cause that led to the symptom of human error when you encounter the human error in the investigation. Also, if you are part of the investigating team or if you are the sole investigator, it is quite possible that you yourself or your team will not have sufficient knowledge to answer all the whys. At that point of time, you should invite more relevant stakeholders and seek actual and definitive answers of each why rather than speculating and not coordinating with the people who actually might have deeper knowledge of the issue. The final root cause that you arrive should mostly be indicative of the process failures or the systems failure. And that is how you can reassure yourself that the cause you have stumbled upon is actually the legitimate root cause. And in order to achieve that, while answering the questions of why, you should make peace with the uncontrollable factors and focus on what should have been controlled. For an example, if there was a system outage as an issue, your final root cause cannot be that there was a tornado or a hurricane as it is not a controllable factor, but rather your issue could be that you did not have a business continuity process to handle such situations. This is why the outcome of the 5 wife investigation and root cause analysis will always depend upon how logically and accurately you answer each why. And once you arrive at the final root cause, do a reverse check, as in review your root causes from bottoms up to ensure that the sequence and the causality do make sense. Finally, you may ask what problems is 5Y is most suitable for and the answer is it is suitable for mostly relatively simpler problems. And the reason is when there are multiple root causes spanning across multiple categories, you will have to repeat the process multiple times. This means that let's say a particular problem has multiple root causes, one in manpower and the other in tools and system, you will have to run 5 Ys in both the categories separately. And that is how you can arrive at the two distinct root causes, both equally contributing to the problem. Having said that, for problems with apparently singular root cause, this is the simplest, the easiest and less time consuming method and thus it is the method of choice in a lot of organizations. Alright, so you may be asking for relatively complex problems, what are the other popular methods for root cause analysis? And that is why part 2 of the video will cover another such method that is more suited for complex problems. Many of you would have heard or even used the fishbone diagram which is what we are going to talk about in fair detail in part 2. So until then, stay tuned and as always, thank you very much for watching.